Oh, do you know why green laser pointers uh, appear brighter? It is because the human eye has evolved to be more sensitive to green wavelengths of light, more so than red ones. So even though this is at the same power as a red uh, laser pointer like you can buy at an office store, it looks cooler! <laughs> I ruined the camera. Hello and welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes. I'm Kyle Hill, notable science face and person. And on this show, we like to extend the conversation around the things that we nerd out about. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? What did you think? Why is water wet? Stop asking me that. I'm not going to answer it. Is fire on fire? I don't know. <laughs> it's semantics. So let's get right down to it. On the last episode of Because Science, we tackled the science of Black Panthers. Black pan. Not even. Black Panther. Black Panther. Black. Nope. Now you're in your head again. Black Panthers. Black Panthers. That's the shield. Black Panthers. Black Panthers. Down, down. Black yes. Panthers. Black Panthers vibranium suit that I am now pointing at so effectively. I said that vibranium, because it has to absorb kinetic energy, it could be woven into Black Panther suit in such a way that it would transform kinetic energy into another form of energy that is usable, like potential energy like you'd find in a spring. So if his suit functioned like nanoscale tiny springs in the layers of his suit, then it could store kinetic energy as potential energy. But what did you have to say about my theory that is not a... It's not official, but you had a lot of comments about it. The first comment comes from Zen Hydra and the tentacle face therein, who says, how would, a, how would such a suit keep the wearer from turning into pace when it released, ew, when it released kilojoules of energy? Uh, I won't read the rest. This is getting at something that I did not have time to get into at all, and I didn't mention in the episode, but it's very important. So, smart boy Isaac Newton, his third law of motion says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, which is to say that if I apply a force to something, that something applies an equivalent force on me. So if Black Panther could store kilojoules of energy inside of his suit, and then he touched something and released it, that thing wouldn't just move. It would, he would apply a large force to that thing, like a car's hood, but he would have the same force applied to him, which means just because the forces are so large involved here, he would also fly in the opposite direction. Think of it like if you were holding a giant cannon and you fired it, there's a lot of force applied to the ammunition, but if it's enough to fling that thing way out there, you're also gonna get flung back. So I didn't include that in the episode because I don't have time. But you are absolutely right, Zen hydrotenical face. If you are applying kilojoules of energy from the surface of something when it is released, it is gonna force you back the other way. But if you look, let's take, no spoilers, but take one look at this clip from Black Panther jumping off the hood of a car after smashing it. Doesn't it look like at the same instant that the car is being smashed downwards that he is being propelled upwards? Hmm? Yep. Scientifically accurate by accident. The best kind. <laughs> Second comment comes from Collider115. Can you go so slow that you redshift? No, I don't know what you mean. Redshifting is moving away from something. So if you're looking at an object and it's moving away from you, it's wavelengths of light that you are picking up from, uh, from its reflected light into your eyeballs. The wavelengths are spreading out. And as they spread out from visible light, it moves towards the more red end of the spectrum. You most often hear about redshifting in the expansion of the universe. So when we look at galaxies, they are more red than they should be because they are moving away from us. And they're actually accelerating away from us towards the heat death of the universe. But can you move so slowly that you redshift? I think you're, yes, but you're saying it wrong, I think. You can, anytime you move away from someone, they are look, if they're looking at you, you are redshifting, but they won't be able to pick it up unless you are moving a significant fraction of the speed of light. That's when the, the shifting becomes very apparent. Fun fact, if the flash ran at you at a certain speed, his red suit would appear bluer, even purple. Or if he ran away from you, he could move so fast that he'd be invisible, because it would go from red to 
infrared and you wouldn't be able to. Anyway, next comment comes from Giga Adam, who says, I guess you really had to use your vibranium for this one. Boo! Nice. The next comment comes from Bobby Carloni, who says, so what you're saying is we should organize our society along the lines of the mantis shrimp. Yeah. I said that Black Panther suit, it releases energy kind of like the claws of a mantis shrimp, with, which build up a ton of potential energy inside of their muscles and then release it all at once to create shock waves and heat and light and a, and a big force with a lot of acceleration. Yes, we should all be more like the mantis shrimp. You know why? Because they can, as far as we know, they can see more colors and more kinds of light than any organism on the planet. They are the Geordi LaForge of this planet. And don't you want to be like him? I do. I also have an engineering degree, but not as smart. And our last comment comes from Von Shit Shaw. It's your name. What would happen, what will happen if Juggernaut impacted with Black Panther with with low to velocity. You know, maybe he just likes using that word. Good thought experiment. So what are we dealing with? I think that the Juggernaut's powers is unstoppable momentum, which I guess would mean unstoppable, unstoppable kinetic energy. But as we will get to in a future episode, Black Panther is not immune to changes in momentum. Meaning that even if his suit absorbs kinetic energy, he's not gonna be not moved. Ooh, lasers, did you see that? So the best comment this week is going to Zen Hydra. Congratulations, you are a super nerd. You decided to highlight something that I did not include, I probably should have, but didn't have time, good for you. Newton's third, not as cool as Newton's second. I was a fan of his second. <laughs> hey, but of course I am not always right. Look at this, this is my lab. None of this is usable in experiments, except for the claws. They can cut stuff. So, I make mistakes. And you have corrections, as always. Thank you. So which one of you had the best correction this week, showing that I am super wrong? First correction comes from Ben Mueller, who says, a lot of stuff, but basically he is saying that the only problem with my design for the suit, if it was spring-like is that the springs would only be able to store energy locally, meaning that if I had springs here on my hand and I charged them up, how could energy come out from another part of my body or the suit, like my shoulder? Uh, th that's a problem. You're right. And then Ben goes on to say, how about piezoelectric properties, which is a property of some crystals and some other molecules in matter that when you deform it, it produces an electric current. And if you apply an opposite electric current, that deformation reverses itself. So it would be a way to apply mechanical stress to a suit, create an electric charge that he could, that Black Panther could store, and then that charge could come back out and move the suit and do basically what we are saying. That is a great idea. It is more or less the same kind of idea as springs. I never said, I, I meant like springs. I don't know what Wakandan engineers would come up with. They are way smarter than us. Um, but I almost like this design even more because not only are you now dealing with crystals, but you're also dealing with electricity. Shocking. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. Piezoelectricity is fascinating. Couldn't include it. These episodes are only 10 minutes long. I can't make 30 minutes videos. I'm not Vsauce. Next correction comes from the library. <laughs> this one was way overdue. <coughs> oh, uh, don't look at that. And they say grammatically, is not clip, is magazine. So I said, what if a whole clip of nine millimeter bullets was shot at Black Panther or a whole clip of AK-47 bullets? Technically those bullets are loaded into those guns in magazines and not clips. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Sorry. Both hold bullets, don't they? You're right, fine. Next correction comes from Gregory Werner who says, I'll tell you how vibranium works. It all depends on, this is your voice. It all depends on the writer and what the writer wants to do. If one writer wants to function like a spring, then it can. If a writer wants it to back like a super rigid and solid, then it is. It all depends on the writer and the purpose of the story. 
and the purpose of the story needs it to. I don't understand half of that, but what you're saying is, because magic. Okay. Because writers. It's fine. A lot of times in sci-fi and science fiction and fiction, narrative is more important than getting everything completely right, which is fine. But do you know what else is, is fine? What I said. This is like, this is like coming, coming, to, coming to my channel and just saying, but what if it's not? <laughs> but what if it is? And the last correction comes from Rod Richson Vista, Private Eye. Well, he's not a detective, but it sounds like one. Kyle, buddy, I think you're talking about a pistol shrimp. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you mean this thing? That's, that's funny, because I was talking about this thing. And that's what I showed on the episode. Which one is a mantis shrimp? Oh, the one that I meant. They both do the same thing, Rod Richson. They both have very strong, they cavitate the water and creates heat hotter than the surface of the sun and light in a, in a bubble that collapses, a lot of force. So Rod Richson, buddy, I think you're talking about something else. Oh, love your work, hope I get featured on the vlog, hui hui. He got me. You don't call anyone who's actually your buddy, buddy. It's, a, it's always like this, hey, hey, buddy. So given all of your corrections, where do we stand? I didn't mention Newton's third law, which is very important in these considerations with Black Panther. I did mean mantis shrimp, buddy. There are other cool ways to explain Black Panther's suit like piezo electricity. I'm gonna give myself a solid B plus. Thanks for keeping me honest. More vibranium to come. Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha, projectalpha.com, you've gotten the next episode two days earlier than anyone else, and you know what it's about, but for everyone who hasn't subscribed yet, the next episode of Because Science will be, uh, ooh, right here, <laughs> because we're gonna discuss what kind of toxin is on Poison Ivy's lips. That's right, Poison Ivy is a Batman villain, one of the best villains of all time, one of the greatest femme fatales of all time, and her signature move is a poisonous kiss that is so deadly it can kill in seconds, very, very quickly. What kind of toxin would she need to have on her lips to do what we see her do? It's a fun episode, a lot of prop work. So go watch the last episode about Black Panther if you haven't yet, tell me what I got right, tell me what I got wrong, comment, question, at all the Because Science handles, at Because Science, Facebook.com slash Because Science, YouTube.com slash Because Science, and I'll be checking all of those handles and channels for everything you have to say. Also, all the weird comments you leave me. Hey, don't forget, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, it obviously makes a sound, that's how sound works. But who hears it? It doesn't matter. There are still pressure waves produced. A squirrel would hear it. No one, no knows squirrels what? are there. Yeah, squirrel would hear it. No, no there's no squirrel. Things. So now squirrels are, are persons? Yes. Remember, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no organism with ears around to hear it, does it make a sound? Still yes. That's what sound, it, it's a way, it's there. Bye.